talk about the All Stars. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, we fly, we fly down through it. I suppose like uh, Limerick ended up with fourteen nominees, and you know, three time All Star last three years of former hurler dear Garrod Hegarty is probably one of the most notable omissions. You'd have to say him and Declan Hannan are the the two from would say two reg Limerick regulars that didn't make it. David Reedy, who started, I think the last three games, uh, made it. Mike Casey is still chasing that that All Star. He'd be the Basically, he would complete the list of Limerick regulars. The Limerick regular starting fifteen. He's the only one without an, without an All Star. Um, the three Limerick lads obviously got nominated for Hurler of the Year. Kyle Hayes, Dermot Burns, some some effort to be nominated back to back again, and a fair chance of winning it. Even though I think Aaron Gallan will probably just about tip it, which will mean Patrick's well will make like unprecedented, unprecedented. Yeah, but even like three different guys in three years in a row would be unbelievable. Like for a club, like that's that's dream scenario, really. Um, seen a good bit of commentary around the young hurler the year, which I thought was interesting. So you obviously had Adam Hogan, uh, Mark Rogers, and Kieran Joyce, and obviously a few people from Limerick maybe with their noses that were joined a small bit. Do you think Cotlo O'Neill deserved to be nominated for young hurler the year, even though he played very little? Now I give the, the argument that. When he played, he was outstanding and his contributions to the best team in the country maybe might have been more than the other three lads, but the other three lads were regular starters. Um, what's your what's your kind of opinion on that? Well, I'm trying to remember, you know, because a little bit of time has passed at this stage, but you look at the All-Ireland final, he came on and he scored a couple of points. Didn't he start the All-Ireland semi-final against Galway? I think so. Either, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. No, actually, sorry. He came on after 56 minutes and he got himself a point. Like, I, I, I'm trying to remember. It's funny, actually. We're just trying to remember off the top of your head which games did these lads all play. And he scored a couple of points in the Munster final. He scored a goal, a brilliant goal against Cork. Do you remember that game down in, yeah. um, in the Gaelic grounds? That was really, really good. And I'm trying to see. Yeah, he scored five points against Tipperary. So that's fairly notable. Uh, earlier on in the season, he scored a couple against uh, Clare. So you're I looking at what are you looking at here? A tally of about one eleven, one twelve over the course of the games that he played, and like if you if you were to add up the minutes that he played, you'd probably get the equivalent of what a game and a half, maybe two games, close to two games, maybe all told. I'd say if you're Carl O'Neill, you're starting to wonder what have I done to the GA world that last year I wasn't <laughs> allowed to play in the All Ireland Under Twenty yeah. Championship. And this year, I'm not being nominated for hurler of the year. Sorry, young hurler of the year. Yeah, I I put him in there. I think he wants. To, I think he should definitely be in there. Uh, if you're asking me, who else was very harshly done by? I'd say Paddy Doyle can feel quite unlucky. Fair enough. There was a hat trick scored against him by Tony Kelly, but you know Dublin left themselves wide open. He actually won some brilliant ball against Tony Kelly that one day. Uh, that day, I'm fairly sure he caught a nice ball over him at one stage. Kelly obviously did all the damage. I thought he was absolutely brilliant all year. If you were to pick a three for me, I'd probably go Rogers, O'Neill, and Paddy Doyle. Yeah, I probably would have went uh, Rogers, Hogan, O'Neill. Um, and that's not to take away from Kieran Joyce, who I thought was, was very good again this year. I'd say Cotton O'Neill probably deserved to be in the three, though, for, for what Doyle? he did. Nah, nah, he'd be, he'd be slightly you. down. Nah, no, I think he's a very good player. Uh, and he had a very good year. Um, Probably that that Clare game. I know he was left. You could say he was thrown to the wolves some somewhat, and let, but he was he was following Kelly. Maybe he was a bit naive a couple of times. I think he's a very good player though, and I think mm -hmm. he's going to be like he's going to be a mainstay for them over over the next while. Someone just asked what age the young hurler the year was. Um, it they used moved to be under it up, didn't they? they? Yeah, it used to be under used to be under twenty one, and then it was moved back to under twenty, and then there weren't that many under twenty players actually playing senior. It's either 21 or 22. I think it could be 22, actually. Well, Rogers is 22 now because that was one of the things I checked this morning when I, when I saw the list. And I was like, OK, Carl O'Neill is younger than Mark Rogers. So it's definitely nothing to do with age here. Um, and to be fair, though, to Mark Rogers, who I thought was you know brilliant for well, most games that I saw him, I thought he was really, really good. He was the joint fourth highest score yeah. scorer from play in the championship this year. So number one was Connor Whelan. Now, we're not going to pick our all-star team today. But Conor Whelan got 7.18 from play. Owen Cody got 5.21. Tony Kelly got 4.22. Then there's a host of guys who finished on um, joint fourth. Mark Rogers with 4.12 was one of those. So I'd be, you know, I think it's very, very unlucky. Or sorry, he's he's rightfully in there. Yeah, I think it's very, very unfortunate that uh, Cahill O'Neill isn't in there. 
I think, like it's, it's, I, I think it's a bit of an oversight, really, and maybe that he hasn't been taught about enough because he hasn't maybe started many games or whatever. But, like, yeah, the impact he's made with the best team in the country yeah. throughout the year definitely merits him being in the tree, I'd have to say. Yeah, and look, if you're going to comment and, like, say to us, oh, no, this lad should be in and that lad, give us your three, and we, we'd be happy to read them out there because it's not an easy thing here. SSRI said, should all stars be selected from now on, like three nominations for cornerbacks, etc., for each position instead of mixing it up like what's happening at the moment? Well, look, the, the positions are fluid, so it makes it kind of difficult. There's a couple of lads who are picked in midfield um, for nominations who you'd say, Oh, well, David Fitzgerald, he keeps wearing number eight, but he's quite clearly a wing forward. And wing forwards these days move up and down from midfield. Uh, Adrian Mullen often wears number nine, but does he always play as a midfielder? I would say no. Now, he does at times, but I would say no. So at times, it's it's like I'd actually sympathize with the guys on the committee because, you know, I don't necessarily think that uh, players' positions are, are set enough to always pick them in those positions. Is there any players that... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'd I'd agree, I'd agree, I'd agree with you now. Like, and I, like, I still think Will O'Donoghue could end up as All Star number six, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he does. Um, well, he played two games there, so it's just yeah, so, yeah. the two the two most important games of the year as well. But yeah, positions are. I don't know. I think we're probably going away from lads been picked or you know three cornerbacks, three fullbacks because like outside of like would say like Mikey Butler is cornerback obviously, but he played wing back at different stages this year and followed players. It's very hard to put players in a box like Dan McCormack played or not Dan McCormack, uh, Dan Morrissey, you know, played predominantly full back, but full back is now a two man full back line. So mm. he's technically playing nearly as a cornerback, if you get me. So I think it's hard to try to leave it leave it to be as fluid as possible. But um I, t- I still think even if you're picked in midfield, like there's a, still a good chance that, you know, I don't know who could be picked in defence despite being nominated at midfield. Yeah, crack of the ash says it's an easy one to make. If you're a manager, which young hurler of the three would you take? Easy answer. But give us your three. Give us your three. Uh, Adrian McGrath saying John Conlon should be number six. Hardly 12 points from playing four games instead of loads for other. Very unlucky. Did he get four or five against Limerick? I can actually look that up if you want to take over the conversation. Yeah, he, 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 was ver- he was very good. When I saw uh, Horgan nominated, I was kind of thinking maybe, maybe Harnady should be nominated as well. Um it's interesting as well. Uh, Lim- or Car- Clare were beaten in the Munster final and beaten in the All Ireland semi final by Kilkenny, and they got one more nomination to Kilkenny. They got nine. Kilkenny hammered, got eight. Right. Well, sorry, uh, they weren't hammered. No, they were hammered the year before. But like you know, they were disappointed. Is what? It's yeah. More like um, it. As well as that, like when you're looking at it from a Kilkenny point of view, and you see your two All Star nominations in attack are TJ Reid and Owen Cody, and you, like you don't have anyone else. Like that's. But Mullen no, no, kind of, you know, he's Yeah, ish. I, I, I suppose Mullen was nominated for midfield, kind of plays there a bit. Then you see there was no Kilkenny, one Kilkenny player nominated across the half back line, David Blanchfield, who didn't play the All Ireland final. I think the, the nominations show the holes that Kilkenny have and that yeah. they need to fill over the next couple of years, really. Yeah. Um, I say, I'm looking at, I'm wondering, does the odd person get nominated still on reputation? Now, I think that the guys who should have been nominated from Tipperary, and obviously three nominations is, is more than enough for Tipperary the way the season went. But I thought they should have been Jake Morris rightly, and I thought it should have been, and people say, oh, yeah, Bursley Lee bias. But I think Dan McCormick had some big games, for example, shutting down Groad Hegarty in that uh, Munster Championship game. And I would have said Alan Tynan. Now, there's no Tipperary player who had five was it six? Uh, yeah, sure. We'll include the Offaly game. Who had six brilliant games there? <laughs> There's no one who had six brilliant games. So you can kind of pick holes in every argument. Fair enough. But I would have said Alan Tyne and Dan McCormick and Jake Morris were the three rather than look. Rona Maher's brilliant player. So is Noel McGrath, and you know Jake Morris is picked. But like to me, it was like more let's pick the safe ones rather than the ones who probably slightly edged it. And you know that would be my thought. Yeah, I thought Noel was in the Noel would have been in the running for Player of the Month. I think in May, I think he was one of the best players in. Uh, was it April or May? May. Um, then his season kind of tailed off a small bit. Listen, Tynan was probably in the running for for one of them as well. And then his like it's it was just going from week to week. He was unbelievable against Cork. He was probably quiet the next two days. Listen, it was up to me to Pereira to have no nominations. Been honest with you. Mm, yeah, <laughs> but just as well, just as well, like an indictment of Wexford. Obviously, no nomination. An indict- indictment of Waterford, no nomination. Like to play four games uh, for Waterford and not have a nomination, not have anyone in that conversation. For Wexford to play five games and not have any, that just kind of shows how bad their season was. 
you think Patrick Fitzgerald might have got a nomination this year if he was play, started in every game or if Desi was maybe played in full forward line throughout, would he have got one? Yeah, um, well, Patrick Fitzgerald was brilliant against uh, brilliant against Tipperary. He just didn't play enough. Desi didn't play inside enough. Uh, Mark Fitzgerald would have been the one that maybe should have been nominated for me. Yeah, um, a lot of people slating Alan Tynan here, actually. Uh, Tynan had one and a half decent games, empty jersey after the Cork game. Jeez, that is fairly close to the bone. I thought Grodo O'Connor was also very good if you wanted a, a tip nominee. I have a dog barking in the background here, so I'm going to try. I'm going to mute myself, mute myself for a minute. Yeah. Grodo O'Connor was good. He obviously was injured and came off that day. Who did he come off against? What? Came what? Off what? against Waterford. Um, but he was very good up until that point. Um, what about Tom Phelan in terms of Kilkenny lads who didn't get nominated? He was on the way to man of the match in the All Ireland semi final early doors until our Limerick did what they do. Yeah, in the final he was good. He's probably quiet enough up until the final, I would say. Would you say you that, know? sir? Yeah, well, like I wouldn't say he was outstanding going into the final, but he had a very, very good final. I would say the final was when he announced himself really on the, the big stage. Do you think Keane Lynch will work his way into the team? Uh no. I don't no. I don't I don't think he can. I don't think he played enough. He's brilliant in the All Ireland final, obviously. But uh yeah, I don't I don't think I don't think he'd given an award. Shane, I'm gonna put my